So for those that don't know you, I guess if you could just give an introduction, say how you got into jiu-jitsu, where you are now. <laughs> yeah. How? It's, yeah. a, it's a good question, yeah. Uh, my name is Fabio Hollanda, right? I'm, I come from Brazil. I'm a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. I've been black belt since uh, 2001. That's when I received my black belt back in Brazil. I started doing jiu-jitsu. I would say all my friends were doing jiu-jitsu and um, I'd say, um, I used to like to fight, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> so it was a good uh, introduction. So that's how I started. My friends, they already started yeah. and then uh, they pushed me into it. So you, you, you wanted to learn how to fight better. And then did something change like where you fell in love with the sport or what was the, what was the transition? Actually, there? actually the first day, <clears throat> my two best friends, they were already blue belt. One of them, actually, we, we got the black belt together. And uh, first class I got there, I was like 15, you know, white belt. And um, he put me in a triangle choke, even before the class starts. <laughs> so I'm starting to laugh. And he's laughing. And I'm like, why are you laughing? You know, I still can punch you from here. You know? So he actually choked me out cold. Yeah. And then I wake up. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, and like I was very impressed. And, uh, and that's it. At the same time, I was like, man, I was fighting without knowing those things. You know, yeah. I just uh, want to learn that. So. Yeah, I, then I stopped the fight there for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Once that you, was it. That's once it. You put on the key, exactly. You know? <laughs> but he choked man. me out, and I was always scared. Like, man, if I fight someone that knows those things, yeah. you know, it can uh, can hurt me. Gets you a little more uh, cautious. Of you course. There's yeah. people out there oh, that, can, that can really. They can be dangerous. Yes, yeah. yes. 100%. Yes. Great. And so that was in, that was in Brazil. And then I learned Jiu Jitsu, and then I started. <laughs> oh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah. So that was that was in Brazil. And that was in Brazil. Yes. You went white to black belt in Brazil. Or what, yes, sir. I went. Uh, so that was we're talking about uh, 1994. Yeah. And then um, I got my black belt 2001, all in Brazil. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually in my hometown in Natal, up uh, northeast of Brazil. And then when I received my black belt, I moved to Rio. So I stayed from 2001 to uh, 2004 at BTT, mm -hmm. full time training. And then 2004, I came to Montreal, and then uh, I'm here since. Yeah, and so when in love with the uh, winter. Yeah, <laughs> it's a bit of a change. Um, and so you had a you. I mean, I know you now primarily as a coach, but you had a successful competition career. You came third at the at the World Cup at Black Belt in 2003, right? Yes, 2002. 2002. Yeah, so sorry. yes. Um, I, at uh, local level, I was, uh, yeah. you know, I, mean, I you know, state and the Northeast, I was yeah. uh, winning a lot of tournaments. And then I moved to Rio and uh, I always did super good at the worst, but always, you know, hit the quarterfinal, never, never medal at the, at the worst until I moved to Rio. And uh, at the World Cup in 2002, I lost in the semifinal to uh, one of, you know, the top fighters that have existed that was TDD, right? So yeah. it was an honor to fight him. Yeah. And uh, that's it. So then uh, after 2002, I started to do uh, focus on MMA and the no game. Yeah. So I had like 12 fights in my career and um, I won six and I lost six. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's it. So been competing in Jiu Jitsu. I did the wrestling competition. I did the judo competition. So no all game. The, all the grappling, right? All the I think it's because of my older brother, you know, he yeah. always pushed me yeah. too much. Yeah. <laughs> So made me uh, competitive. So I, yeah. I really like to compete. Well, not anymore. Now I'm like, you know, I'm a father. So yeah, I got uh, weak. Not the uh, not the same as when you were 15. Now it's a little. No, bit no, 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 not the same at all. No, even so, changed the way I drive. <laughs> <laughs> Poor cautious. Um, so, you, so I, I I know you primarily as, as as the head of BT Canada, and I mean you have a ton of black belts under you, a ton of great clubs. Um, so how did that transition to coaching? How did that take place? Was that was that a difficult transition, or did, did you fall into coaching really naturally? Or no, actually, actually, uh, I started to coach. I was a blue belt. Oh, okay. Right. So my coach had his gym, and my coach was actually a purple belt. Right. So he had his class. I used to attend to his class, and uh, after was one of my friends' class, and then I had my class after. All right. So I always train with uh, with my coach, and I teach after and. I was like 17 years old at the time when I started. Mm -hmm. When I received my purple belt, I was 18. So we we're talking about 1996. So I always been coaching and fighting. And uh, coaching is like, like it's, it's so natural. Mm -hmm. It's like I see things that sometimes I even see good coaching, coaching, and I'm, I'm, 
I'm observing from them, you know, and I don't understand why they don't say some things. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But like everything in life, it's it's experience, right? I've been in a lot of corner for MMA, you know, MMA fights and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu tournaments. So it's practice makes perfection. Yeah, I I would say like my coaching career even interfering a bit in my fighting career because I'm always doing both, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's you know it's hard to keep it up. Now I'm like 100% coaching. But for example, I tell like, you know, I fought MMA, let's say, we're talking about 2006, not long ago, but it was a different timing. And um, I went in the corner of three guys, an MMA show, and with my hand wrap, and then I came back to fight. So, you know what I mean? So That's nuts. Yeah, That's so nuts. that was, at that time, I looked okay, you know, it's, it's all right. <laughs> you know, it's, who cares, right? Yeah. But uh, thinking back, it's like, yes, it was a bit uh, nuts. Yes. That's interesting that like your coaching was always you, you were always both you were you were a competitor and a coach. Um, but I always how can I say prioritize coaching more because that's how I you know it's my living right coaching yeah. that's how I have the gym and everything so I always put coaching in the second oh sorry in the first and fighting in the second. And so what do you what do you get out of coaching that's different like what what uh, what do you enjoy about it? I I. It's it's um, I enjoy and see all my guys winning. Yeah, it's like it's it's like it's it's a big pleasure to see them more than I no more than myself. You know, I'm a win. And yeah, I'm a win. You know, it's okay. But see my guys win. It's like I help them to win. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm as a piece of my work there, and it's it's very satisfying, and it's happy to see them happy as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get that. It's like um, sometimes it's almost like more nerve wracking when you're seeing. Eight hundred percent, eight hundred percent, because <laughs> because you used to be there. Yeah. But you're trying to help, but you cannot be there, right? So you kind of like... Um, it's, it's kind of out of your hands. With your hands tied, yeah, yeah that's it. <laughs> or your hands wrapped in. That's okay. it. And at the, but at the same time, too, it's like it's, it, it, ner it makes you nervous because sometimes you can say something that um, make your father lose. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can, he can give a bad advice, which I saw many times, all right, during my career, because I always... I like to follow the coaches, too. I like to see how they work. Mm -hmm. and, and actually... In, all different sports, football, soccer. I most of the time when they, you know, they put like the coach talking. I really like to listen to the coaches, and the coach can change the game in a bad way. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? If you tell something that goes wrong, and then uh, so you're that's it. you're a student like not of just jujitsu coaching, but just coaching in general. Coach in general. Coach yeah. in general. I watch. I love to watch football, soccer, and I always, you know, I always listen to the interview of the coaches after. The games, I really, I'm focused on coaching, you know, and different sports, it makes, um, they all connect at the end, you know. It's all the same idea and the same uh, way to win and find a way to win. Yeah. So this is, this is pretty much what I wanted to talk to you about is, I mean, you're known, your nickname is, is Mastermind. Um, just because of you talking about your capacity to see, you know, you're like, why doesn't the coach say that? Your capacity to see certain things and approach things from a certain direction. So I really wanted to pick your brain um, about effective coaching in general, about um, effective strategy in competition, um, what, what you see, what you like to do, or even if we want to start, what mistakes you see other people make. Um, I'm just going to go from there. It's uh, actually my, my nickname was uh, Mastermind at the time. Um, all the UFC fighters from, from Quebec at the time, like uh, GSP, sorry, I believe GSP, Jonathan Goulet, Patrick Cote, mm -hmm. all those guys that used to, to train under me, right? So their manager gave me that nickname, mm -hmm. all right, the Mastermind, because I'm always making the game plan, this and that. And um, I don't know, I don't know how to, to explain, but it's, I guess, the experience, you know, and uh, we see what the other guys are doing, and, um, you, see, you know, with knowledge, you know how to counter, mm -hmm. and... Um, it's it's hard to explain. I I don't know if you can call it natural or just because you've been doing it for so long, you know, it's it's kind of like you walk, you right? You don't think when you walk. Yeah. You just go with the flow. You can just tell. I, I tell a, a story is like I have one of my students in Brazil which he became like three times world champion. And uh, one final for me was the one who really uh, impressed me was he said that he finished the semifinal. And then he looked at me and he's like, uh, Fabio, I'm fighting the winner of the next match. I said, go rest. I'm going to check this match. So I checked the match. 
And uh, that was a purple belt. I think it was 2001, no, 2003. Mm -hmm. And um, I said, go sit, and then I'll check the match. So I checked the match, and I see the guy used to do like a collar drag. All right, it's right hand, he used to collar drag. He collar dragged the guy like three times in the semifinal, and he won. So I told him, listen, he's gonna pull guard, and uh, he's gonna collar drag. He only collar drags with the right hand, you just need to pass to your right side, so he cannot, if you pass to the same side, then he's gonna, you know, drop you there. So just keep passing to the other side. It's all right, so when the match starts, someone asked me, is that the final? When I said yes, I looked back, I was already two points, because he shot in double, mm -hmm. and the whole match, he's keeping just passing here, he's in ended up winning at 2-0. But uh, for me, it's like simple things like this, you yeah. know, it's like it's... Um, I, think that, I think that's interesting, the, the, the idea of being simple. It's simple, but people miss it, you know, stuff like that. I remember one time, so I was at the Abu Dhabi trial, and I was fighting in a final to a guy that I had, uh, had lost to earlier in the division. I was fighting him in absolute. And I went to ask you for advice. And I was like, what do I do? And it, I just remember this because you were just like, just don't worry about it. Like, just go, just go and do your jiu-jitsu. Like, stop trying to, like, overthink it. Like, very simple. Just get to it. And that, for me, was the best thing. And I ended up beating the guy. It just totally cleared my head of just like not overcomplicating it and just, just it, it, it's a really, really simple idea when you cut down to it. So that was, that, I, I like that, I like that concept. That's why you say sometimes, they say like jujitsu is like life, right? Yeah. It's simple. Yeah. We make it complicated. Yeah. You know what I mean? You always look to complicate everything that we do. So it's the same thing with jujitsu. Mm -hmm. You make simple, step one, step two, step three, and get your position. Don't lose your points, you know, stay in a safe position. I was talked to some friends, and um, I've been doing this since 1994, right? Mm -hmm. So how long ago is that? 25 years? And I never had a big injury because I never put my position, myself in a position that I cannot get out. You know what I mean? Even it's like, oh, some guys, like, they play guard, let's say rubber guard. I see, like, a couple guys here that they're hurting their knee because they're forcing too much. You know what I mean? So it's, it's always playing safe, being, you know, in a position that... You know what I mean? You're always in control. It's all about to have control as well. Mm -hmm. But it's, um, it, it, it's, 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 it's hard to explain that. Mm -hmm. But um, when you're there, it's like you said, it's confident, you know? It's like, when you talk, uh, the other day, one of, one of the guys went to the words and he lost, right? He was a good friend of GSP, for example. Mm -hmm. And he was sad. I couldn't make it because we, I had to go to Brazil. And uh, the guy said, was, Jess P asked him, was Fabio there? And he said, no. He's like, man, it uh, makes a difference. Because mm -hmm. when he was with me, I would feel so confident because he brings confidence, you know? I think that's very important. It's like, like you said, it's like sometimes it's, it's, not, what, it's not what to do. It's, you know, just do it. Just go yeah. for it. Could you speak to, do you have any strategies for developing confidence? Strategy? No, it's a... Uh, that's a hard one. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, because there's this kind of this question of like, I guess to, to phrase it this way, in your experience as a coach, do you think that's something that people develop or do you think that's something that people uncover? Like, do you think people have it and you just, you just find out who has it or do you think people develop it? If so, how? The, yeah. the confidence you yeah. think? I think, I know, I think you can develop. Yeah. I okay. think you, I think um, like for sure some people, you know what I mean? It's, it's it's hard to explain, but um, some people you can really push. Some mm -hmm. people don't need to push much, right? Like uh, for example, this guy we were talking about, he's like three times world champion, and I never need to, you know, what I mean, to really push him. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, sometimes we 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 making joke here when the Gumby came here, blue belt. I used to make him uh, walk in front of the the, the class <laughs> and yell like, "I'm the best! I'm the best!" Because <laughs> <laughs> you're so shy and. But I guess how you, you know, you grow up and um, mm -hmm. uh, I was reading the other day was, um, was this guy in Brazil, he's, um, he's number one billionaire there, all right? He's, he owns now a Burger King, Tim Hortons, all those things, his company. And he was talking about um, how important is your mother to your life. I guess he was talking about his mother because back in the days, the father would be working and your mother would be home. And he said... His mother always told him that he was the most beautiful, the most strong, the most smart around, and that built his confidence, right? So there was always a compliment. 
different than you be in a home that uh, the mother comes and hit you and call you ugly this you're dumb right. you can do this so your confidence goes down super you know i mean i i agree with him 100 percent. you know my mom she was my father was super calm guy he was a saint you know my mother she was a fighter and but she always, you know, me. I really believe I was a good looking, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it helped me a lot. Helps, and uh, yeah. <laughs> so same thing with everything else, you know. And even like an approaching a girl or, or alcohol will uh, help too. You know? like, <laughs> but in a fight, it's, 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 it's all about this, you know. You've got to believe, you know. You have to have the people who believe on you too. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're talking about coach. And, um, and if you know the way and then you believe, it's... Um, yeah, so the importance of a coach and the importance of who believes in you and a support system. And kind That's of it. other people who build you up. Yes, yeah. 100 percent. I think your part today you could say father and mother because yeah. it's kind of like um, split up the 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 work at home. Mm -hmm. But back in the days, was you know you spend more most of the time with uh, with your mother. Mm -hmm. All right. So even now it's still more. It's less than it used to be, but still. So the, you have more influence from your mother than from your father. No. But I think in, on both, if they give you confidence, since you're, you're growing up with confidence, you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't need to be um, like the best, actually, but at least you believe it. Yeah. And you say, if you don't believe it, who is going to believe in you? You know what I mean? You have to be the first one to do it. Yeah, because I mean, the other people aren't going to. You know, no, zero, <laughs> zero. They want you to fail. Everybody yeah. wants you to fail. Well, especially if you're competing. They, they 100%. Fail. That's, that's, uh, they're going to win if you yeah. fail. Oh, that's great. That's really interesting. Hmm. Um, so I wanted to keep going, keep going on that topic. So we have, we have confidence in the people that you su surround yourself with. Um, and then you just have that, that, that kind of strategy, but, but I got the confidence. It's, it's a two ways too, right? Yeah. It's like, um, if someone comes here, but he never had experience or knowledge and he said, Oh, you should do this. You're not going to listen. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I guess with my background and uh, being fighting, being around fighters, that 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 gives the, the confidence uh, both ways. You have to you have to ground it. It can't just be from nothing. Like you have to. You no, think, impossible. One hundred percent not. You think yeah. you're a good fighter, but you you have to go and you have to fight, and you have mm -hmm. to, and that's going to help you develop. I was like, for example, my mom. My mom said that was a very good looking, right? I really <laughs> believe her. But if she tells me to do a kimura in a match. <laughs> I want to say, shut up, mom, you know, what do you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're right back there, not now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, but you know what I mean? So, you know, like sometimes I see guys, you know, it's hard, like, let's say uh, we have a, a, um, a student from a friend. Mm -hmm. I say, oh, Fabio, can you help coaching? Yes, but you know what I mean? I don't know what he knows well. You know, I don't know if he, 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 he believes on my system. So it's two ways, you know what I mean? If the guy, you know, like like you said, if you're we already work together, and I tell you to do something, you're confident because you know I know. That's that trust. You know, it's the trust yeah. between. That's hundred percent. Yeah, hmm, that's great. Um, in terms of you, because you know, BC Canada is huge. It's a major organization. In terms of developing people and helping other people become coaches, is there a certain thing that you look for that you try to teach them? With your black belts, your brown belts, it's uh, it's um, if you think about it, the system we have, you when you start right, when you get to blue belt, you're already learning to be a teacher, mm -hmm. right? Because the system we have, we always get the higher belt to help the the lower yeah. belt. Are you? I know the system. Are you okay to explain it? A little so bit? so actually, I got a lot of knowledge, right, from Victor Zuberman, mm -hmm. which uh, when I came here in, 19, in 2004. I started to do wrestling, Montreal Wrestling Club. And he was, for me, it was like, as a coach, my idol, right? Yeah. I listened to him and he's, uh, sometimes he's rough, but uh, so am I, I learned, I learned good. And he had a system there that um, like, um, they actually don't do like the regular warm up, you know, jumping jacks, this and that. We warm up with technique, right? We warm up with uh, doing a technique, which makes what you call the muscle memory. Right, so you have muscle memory. Like we always give an example of walk. You don't think when you walk. So the most, the more you repeat the technique, more natural is going to become. And he has a system, and he always, when I start there, he always had a guy who was there longer than me, and always helping me. So that the the circle goes around, right? So a new guy come, the guy who knows a bit. So when you helping someone, it helps you to concentrate on the details. That's when I start to teach 
as a blue belt. That's what I used to do. I used to do to my, to my coach class, and I really focus on the same because I want to send the message exactly the same. So that makes you more technical because you have to help the others. You know what I mean? And sometimes when the guy's not doing the technique right, I always correct them mm -hmm. in a bad way so they, <laughs> yeah. they feel like they really have to get the right. <laughs> And um, that's it. So you are the blue belt helping the white belts. You're going to get a purple. You're going to be help the blues, the brown help. When you get a black belt, any of my black belt, you can teach they anyway. Teach you, you, years, you know right? what I mean? Yeah. And it's funny because sometimes the guys uh, complain about the system because it's boring. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's repetition, repetition is boring. And then as soon as they start to teach and they go like, oh my God, that's so good. <laughs> that's so good. This is so because I know all this. And yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it really helps to teach. Yeah. You know what I mean? I had this this week too. Someone started teaching, man, I'm teaching and it helps. Because how many times you go to school, different schools and, and the coach comes in and even me back in the days, like, oh, what am I going to teach today, you know? And you, you lost. And then, okay, let's go half an hour warm up. Uh, run there, run that. It's good for your cardio, but if those guys who became professional or competing, they're going to do condition on the side. Yeah. Nobody's going to go to a world championship without doing condition, without doing weights. So you, you, you're getting your conditioning, you're getting your warm-up, but you're doing the technique. And I, I like the point, I like that idea of, well, A, the person, by the time they get their black belt, they've already been coaching for years because they've been, they've been helping white belts when they were blue and they were helping blue belts when they were purple. But also, um, that person can become a better fighter too, right? Because your thing was you, you, you were always coaching and you were always fighting. That's it. So now this person is forced to know the entire curriculum really well. Of course. Because they have to teach the whole thing. And, and that they, helps when he fights because he knows the technique. And now they know all the technique. Yeah. And even help me to coach because uh, if I yeah, say exactly. what to do, I know they know. That's one thing that I think is so valuable about having, I mean, we get to, I, I'll be interested in talking more about this because one of the really innovations I think of your style is that set curriculum that we're talking about. And I think that's so helpful when I'm coaching. When I, I, if I say a move, I know the person knows it. Exactly. And exactly. I know, I know they know it, so I can, I can direct them really well. Yeah. So I guess, I, could you expand more about the benefit besides teaching? Like why you like having a, a set curriculum? You know. So uh, the curriculum, actually, when I started back in Brazil, my coach always used the curriculum. Mm -hmm. So when I received my black belt, we always did belt test. We always have that big discussion, even um, uh, inside of BTT, because we have some other coaches who does not use belt tests and someone's does. And I always did. I always did my belt test for blue to purple. In my hometown, we always did. So coming to Canada, when I learned the knowledge with the Victor Zuberman, I started to put together the idea of practicing the mm -hmm. technique instead of doing the warm-up with the curriculum. So I just add the curriculum and I add some warm-ups and I just uh, actually put on the paper and I put on the wall so everybody knows where to guide. And for, so for the people that don't, um, aren't familiar with it, again, it's, it's, it's um, about 60 moves per belt. Per belt, yes. Right? And then you have a couple, you have uh, 60 moves for nogi or I think it's maybe two days, 120. No gi no gi yeah, we don't have a curriculum from no gi. We oh, have the we techniques. Set, yeah. set of techniques. Set of techniques yeah. and the warm-up, yes. But they had six techniques per belt. So white to blue, you gotta know six yeah. techniques, which include the takedowns take downs. and break falls. And uh, blue to purple six as well, which break falls not there anymore, but the takedowns too. But I love that. I love that um, when I'm working with my students because the person will come and say, Oh, what do I need to work on? And I'd just be like, Well, look, can you do all the moves on the curriculum? You know, do you know all those? No. And it's like, well, go and work on that. And it gives them a, a real direction. Direction, 100%, yeah. yes. Yeah. To know what to learn. And like, I've, you know, even like I have a lot of friends, they're you know, higher belts, and they come here to do seminars sometimes, and they see the system, and they love it. They're like, man, this is, can I take a picture? Because this is amazing, because it really puts you in direction. Sometimes, you, you know, I used, even at my time, we used to, you know, when I was a student, or even teaching. Sometimes you show a technique in one day and then we never see the technique again. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's a pro like, yeah, the person's not going to retain that. That's They're not, not yeah. It's, it's, it's hard, yes, if you don't practice, 100%. Yeah. You have right? to really like it in that day. That's it, and then it fits it. on your game, yeah, and that's, that's it's the, one and, you know, and 100. That's yeah. a, that would be a big difference. And, and at the same time, when you go close to tournaments, we do the drills, right? So 10 each side, push hard, so it, you warm up doing the techniques. Yo, so what what is your opinion on drilling? Oh, I really like that. I really like mm -hmm. to um, I really like to drill, and uh, 
I see some, you know, people discussion, uh, discuss sometimes, oh, the drill, the sparring. I think everything is important, you know. Mm -hmm. what I, mean? I'm, I believe in sparring 100%. I don't believe in class without sparring. At the same time, uh, I believe in drill, especially when you go close to tournament. So we don't need to go to specific technique or just drill, drill and sparring. But I really like it. I really like the idea to, to get your, your body move um, naturally mm -hmm. instead of thinking all the time, you know. Well, again, that confidence and keeping it simple, like if you've drilled a move 100 many yeah. times, yeah. Yeah. you have that confidence. I was even uh, checking this week, we were doing drills and um, new white belts. And yesterday we were watching and was another white belt who started him like three weeks ago. And he was pushing the legs and past the guard. And his friend was like, yeah. wow. And I'm like, did you see that? Did you see yeah. it? Like, just like that. Yeah. Naturally. Because they've just been getting that muscle memory. 100%. Yeah. Getting that confidence the techniques. Yeah. That's cool. So one thing with the, with the curriculum. So I, I'm really familiar with the BT curriculum. Um, there's no Baron Bolo on there, for example. So I would, I would, I'm curious about your take on some of these fancier moves. Do you think... Do, do we not need to learn them? Should we learn them, but just defensively? Should you do them if they work for you? It's it's um, like it's funny because I say bring bolo, bring bolo. You know what bring bolo means in Brazil, right? It's, I you told you you said it before. It's like a it's a, it's a scramble, scramble yeah. all right? So back in the days, oh, it was a big scramble. It's like wow, what a bring bolo, you know? <laughs> so that scramble became a technique, and uh, I, I it's it's. Um, it's all about the style of the coach, you know what I mean? I, we cannot call a technique bad or good, you know what I mean? It's not my style, right? On when, like I said, when I started because I used to like to fight and I always dreamed to do MMA and I base an MMA, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So all the techniques, most of the techniques we do, we can do gi and no gi. Yeah. Like, you know, my favorite is kimura. You can do kimura gi and no gi. I like guillotine, guillotine too and you can do gi and no gi, right? So... Like uh, we have some, uh, you know, the lapel sweep, we can easily do it with the single leg. So I always base my, my game with the gi and no gi. So, and I always think in a position that, it, you know, if you go into a fight, in a real fight, in a street fight, or an MMA fight, you know what I mean? I'm not going to get stuck there. So it's based on uh, self-defense, but, you know, for a real fight. But I, I don't dislike a bit in bolo. We, like, you know, it's like a lot, I know a lot of people do. I like to counter, so I like to be on the top, so I don't mind. Mm -hmm. I can't teach because I'm not a uh, specialist, you know what I mean? I won't teach you halfway because everyone's doing, you got to do it. You know what I mean? On my ideas, everyone's doing, we're going to do something to count. Because you try to be like someone, everyone else, and it's always someone who's doing more than you. You're just going to be a bad version of somebody else. Exactly, 100%. Just, yeah. A bad version of someone because there's always one who does more than you. And I think there's something to be said for that. I, again, that comes back to that confidence of why am I going to be a bad version of someone else with like, my game. And I always like to be different, right? Yeah. I, 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 I hate to be normal, you know? And I <laughs> so like everyone else Sticking doing out. this, I like, oh, no, let's do something <laughs> else, you know? And, uh, like I used to, like when I used to have a beard when nobody had, but not everybody had a beard, so I'm not shaving. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeping it different. Um, and I like that idea of gi, no gi in MMA, because again, you're just maximizing your time. You're maximizing everything you do can work for everything. Yep. Um, I'm hoping maybe we'll get to see a bit of Kimura stuff later today. So I wonder, sure. you're, you're super, super well known for your Kimura. So I'm wondering just what attracted you to that technique like and why why do you like it so much um i think you're you're definitely one of the best people in the world from that position um so just pick your brain on it and you talked about it's gi and no gi and it's mma but a bit more about it like uh actually when i was a purple belt all right i used to since some blue belt i compete the first words was 1996 and i competed there that's cool and um like let's for example i used to come from my hometown to rio I used to compete after, you know, after the fight, I would sit there and I watch hundreds of matches. Purple belt, everything. When I was a purple belt, I saw a black belt division, which uh, the guy wins like two, three matches in a tough division with Kimura. But it's, it's back there was even worse, the cycle. You know what I mean? Kimura was already like old technique. Oh, nobody used that, you know? We don't call Kimura in Brazil, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> we call Americana. Yeah. And uh, Kimura was the was guy who beat Ilio, yeah. all right? So, so nobody calls that. <laughs> no but, respect. you know, so when I see this guy, it's like, man, that's an that's a old technique that nobody's using. That back there, nobody was using. We're talking about uh, 1998. Mm -hmm. 
1998 was already considered old, yeah, that's right? right? So, so then it came back. I see this guy black belt to win. I was like, man, why, why can I, you know, can I do as well? So I started to practice at the gym, just like, you know, this was. I'll give an example to the guys. I used to get the kimura, and how I became better. I was like, I'm not letting go, right? I'm gonna work from every situation. I got caught counter so many times, which made me counter the counter. So what, what made me you know, became super good was I never give up. So I'll get a Kimura, you will spin around to armbar. I'll get a Kimura again, you spin around armbar, but now you get harder. And then I started to develop defense for your counters. So that's how it became super good because I was, you know, you know like I say, ego is, um, is the enemy of perfection, right? So. Well, I, I really like that because it comes back to that confidence because you could... You could have done a Kimura, and then you get armbarred, and you go, well, forget this. That doesn't this. work. This. That doesn't, doesn't work. work. Yeah. <laughs> but I read, saw a black belt win the words with that. So right. it was I read on my head. So you, so you know it can work, yeah. and you know you can get better. So you just yeah. keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. That's it. So I just keep repeating. And, um, so I used to watch. All, yeah, that's it. So Kimura. And then it works with, um, with the Gi and no Gi, like you said, yeah. MMA. And always in my head, I'm, I'm, I have two arms fighting one of your arms, right? Yeah. So... I, I think I have advantage, even fight like big guys, you know, mm -hmm. back in the time there when I moved to BTT was when BTT was the best team in the world at the time, MMA, Gi, we had like a Bustamante, Maris Perry, uh, the, you know, the, the Nogueira brothers, Arona, Paulo Filho, it was a dream team. It was, yeah, and, it was a place to be. And you go in Kimura, those guys, you know, <laughs> it was, uh, was yeah, hardcore, it was hardcore, <laughs> yes. And, and, and at that time too, we had like, you know, 50, 60 black belts on the mat. And each one had a different way to counter, which made me learn, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, more stuff. Each one had a different way to teach, which made me, you know what I mean, learn new stuff. So I believe at the time I was at BTT, it was a big clinic, but um, always, you know, always repeating, repeating, and trying, and never give up, like you said, and for sure you beat confident. Yeah, that's Once I have the Kimura, I said, no, you're done. That's <laughs> in my head already. It's like, you, I'm not letting go. Well, I believe it, yeah. but it's, uh, it's one, that's one thing that I've taken away a lot from your lessons is like, if you have it, don't let go. And again, I think that just comes down to confidence. You, you, exactly. you get it and you get scared. If I'm someone's going to give up, if someone's going to give up, it's going to be you, not yeah. me. You know what I mean? But we see that so much. The person, yeah. they go for something, they go, it's not working and it's not good. And they just, they let go. They but switch around. The person could have been about to tap. The person could have been about to give up. Yeah. But you just, you lose that confidence. That's it. Hmm. That's it. And, and uh, think about it, right? Some people, they, when you get the Kimura, they don't even try to, to escape. They try to block, to resist. So they're hoping that you're going to give up. Yeah. So they, they're resisting. It's like, oh, he's going to get tired and he's going to give up. And that's when uh, you don't. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Um, cool. So is there anything else? Is there any other direction that you want to go but with coaching that we didn't, what we didn't hit on or strategy or anything like that? It's, um, it's, it's hard because, you know, coach... Like different coach has yeah. different styles, different yeah. um, way, different techniques, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But uh, like you said, for me, it's all about confidence. My coach used to say, like, all the time you go for a technique, it's like, um, it's like a crossroad, all right? So you got to choose one and go. If you're, you're not sure which one you're going to take it, left or right, left or right, you end up hitting in the, in the middle. So when you're not confident that you're not sure, that's when a technique goes halfway and it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. When you go, you go 100%. You get a Kimura, it's like it's 100%. So I put all my energy there to try to finish. So having that confidence and then, yeah, I was talking about getting a support system or a coach that is going to tell you that and yeah. give you that. Um, it's hard because one guy asked me one time, he said, yeah, but uh, he's talking about, you know, have one coach, have one mentor, you know, to, to teach you and, you know, to guide you. But if you ended up in a gym that the guide, it's not good. You know what I mean? So it's... It's a hard call. Yeah. To oh. find it's it's hard. Yes. I'm curious talking about this with you too. Like, w if you have any advice for people um, who are in I don't know maybe a smaller club or a smaller city, and they're I mean I'm sure when you came to Canada you you might be you open up a new club you'd be the best guy in that room, right? But you're still. It was it was like it was like ten guys at the gym at yeah. the time. Yes. So you're still getting better. You're still improving. Um, so what do you do when you're the best or what do you do in a so so for example even in, on my hometown when um, when I got my brown belt I opened my school and my coach he stopped to, to train as well 
right? So he became a police officer and I was training and teaching and training with my students, right? So what I used to do, is, you know, sometimes like, you know, let them pass to escape, get them mount to escape. So I always put me in a bad position. So work on my escapes. And at the same time, I used to compensate a lot with uh, condition. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm training with, you know, with the guys that I taught them. So I know where they go. All right. So make it easier for me. But at the same time, I used to work up every morning, work out hard, you know, run, push, you know, pump your weights and uh, compensate with that. When I got here, for example, I used to compensate with wrestling which I wasn't familiar. So three times a week, you know, it's three hours per class. And I was even practicing with the guys like uh, every morning at 7 a.m. with the Montreal Wrestling Club. Mm -hmm. So every day, so I compensated with wrestling. Then I started to do MMA as well. We, you know, you add boxing, you add Muay Thai. So you always improve, you know, it's, that's the real cross training, right? Yeah, you find, some, you find some area that's difficult. And, you know, even if it's just Jiu-Jitsu, you let that person mount you let that person get you in their good position it's and at the same difficult. and at the same time i want to coach so good yeah that i can make my students give me a challenge yeah all right i don't want to be here forever beating my students that means i'm a bad coach but it's a good mentality because sometimes you see coaches and they want to be you know they, they want to be the best person or they, they feel better when they're they're able to beat up everybody but you this is this opposite but that the confidence comes back there right yeah if you're not confident, you don't want your student to be better than yeah. you. You think you got you got to prove it in your own club. Exactly. So, you but when so you, you try to make you feel better. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want my students super good so they can give me a challenge. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really like to push hard. So uh, Gumby is saying that's him. Uh, it's talking about him. <laughs> so I really like to uh, push hard, right? So I don't like to train, you know, for train. Yeah. So if I come here and it's, you know, it's all white belt and there's no one good. Mm -hmm. I have to pump weight, which I don't like it neither. Yeah. <laughs> so you got to get these. So I got to get the guys <laughs> super good and then uh, give me a challenge. You know? Yeah. <laughs>